Directors of Omega Cancer and Health. It gives me great pleasure to open up the celebrations of our first year anniversary of our radiation therapy unit. We had a capital campaign of $10 million. We're now over $8 million. A big thank you to all of our donors who have supported us. In particular, thanks to the community who have supported our Relay for Life Fund. During the past four years, the Relay for Life teams have funded over $2 million towards this capital campaign of $10 million. Future funds for the Relay for Life will go to our Equal Access Fund, which I'll talk about briefly later. Our dream, which started four years ago, became a reality in May of 2017, when our first patient was treated on May 23rd. Since opening, we have treated 130 patients. That is, 130 people who do not have to go overseas and sit in a lonely hotel room for anywhere from four to 10 weeks receiving their radiation treatment. Our state-of-the-art Varian radiation therapy machine can treat 95% of all cancers diagnosed and which require radiation. Dr. Fosker, our radiation oncologist, will provide details. Our clinical affiliation with our overseas partners, Dana-Farber, Brigham and Women's Cancer Center, ensures that residents of Bermuda have access and the expertise of leaders in the field of cancer without having to leave their homes here in Bermuda. Dana Ferber, Bringer Women's Cancer Center, is ranked number four in the U.S. by the U.S. News and World Report. And we have representatives with us today from Dana Ferber who will talk with you about the clinical affiliation. Additionally, when Bermuda Cancer and Health embarked upon the radiation therapy, we ensured that we did not duplicate any services and partnered with the Bermuda Hospital Board to provide the CT simulation testing that we share, and we also share the expertise of Dr. Fosker. Further, we have a very good relationship with PELS, who are providing the community nursing care required of our radiation therapy patients. As a charity, we are committed to ensure all people receive radiation treatment, regardless of whether or not they have private health insurance. No one will be turned away because they cannot afford to pay. Dr. Fosker will report that 36% of 47 of our patients that the center have treated during the first 12 months are either underinsured or uninsured. This is higher than what we had anticipated and the cost burden to the center is great. Bermuda Cancer and Healthcare has an equal access fund, which is funded by our major fundraising events, such as the upcoming Relay for Life, the Breast Cancer Month, etc. So we urge Bermuda to continue to support these events as the money to raise allow us to provide universal health care. As we move forward, our focus will be to ensure that the center facilitates a 360 degree, 360 degree approach to cancer and that our patients have access to all the support they require during their journey through cancer. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Tara Curtis, CEO of New Cancer and Health, to give you a bit more information. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I'm Tara Curtis, the CEO for Bermuda Cancer and Health Center. And I just thought I would talk a, a little bit about um, how we got to how we got to today. Um, we've been very fortunate that we've had a long-standing relationship with the Dana-Farber Brigham and Women's Cancer Center and the Brigham and Women's Hospital in particular. And so when our board of directors uh, uh, agreed and, and decided that this would be a very important initiative for the center to t take on, uh, we very soon reached out to our contacts at, at the Dana Brigham to see how could we partner with them, being world-class uh, experts in their field, um, knowing that we would need to have that world-class expertise to help us to design, to develop, uh, to give us guidance in terms of what patients would expect. And so, um, we did enter into an agreement um, with the Brigham and Women's Hospital in particular. Uh, we had expert physicists, physicians, uh, radiation therapists, nurses, IT specialists that came on board as part of the project team to, to really help us design this wonderful facility that we have. On June the 13th, 2016, we broke ground. As Judy said, on May 23rd, 2017, uh, we treated our very first patient 
So within a nine month period, uh, we were able to completely build this facility and be in a position in which we could begin treating in, in about nine months from when we broke ground. So I'm tremendously thankful for the board of directors, for the amazing staff that are here at Bermuda Cancer and Health Centers sticking with us as we went through that level of construction and uh, uh, undertaking. And then of course, the continued relationship that we have with the Dana-Farber Brigham and Women's Cancer Center. Thank you. So hi, good afternoon. So I'm Chris Foscoe. Um, I'm radiation oncologist here and medical director here for Bermuda Cancer and Health Center's radiation unit. Um, and we're now a year on from opening and having radiation, radiation therapy available here locally and it's had a hugely positive impact for the care of our patients. So I really want to say thank you. Um, it's been an incredible team effort and everyone who's been involved has made a difference. To get this far, we've needed organisation, inspiration, fundraising and caring people. And by delivering radiation through Bermuda Cancer and Health Centre, where there's the philosophy of equal access to care, it's brought together a wonderful and like-minded team. Um, those here at Bermuda Cancer and Health, those at Dana Father and Brigham Women's Cancer Centre, those at King Edward Memorial Hospital, those in the community, and every single person who's made a donation. The qualities that bring these groups together is the ability to have the patient's best interest at the for forefront of all of their thoughts. So standing here, or standing outside, uh, a year ago at the opening, we made a number of predictions um, based on modelling and assessments about the potential benefit of having radiation here in Bermuda. Now that we are a year on, we can say that those potential benefits have been realised and they're actual benefits that patients are experiencing. So as Judy said, we've treated 130 patients in our first year. 130 patients with external beam radiation, which is more patients than they've ever managed to get overseas to receive overseas radiation in the past. Which highlights that our model of collaborative care, with a fantastic team here in Bermuda working closely with a dedicated and wonderful team over at Brigham and Women's Hospital, does deliver world-class care here. So it means for those patients and those people who previously couldn't go overseas, whether that's because they were too unwell or they couldn't afford to, or they simply didn't want to be away from their friends and family at what's a really trying time, they can now stay here in Bermuda and receive world-leading radiation therapy right here. It also demonstrates that those patients that can go overseas are choosing to stay. Again, with a collaborative model, with a cost-effective care, they're choosing to have that world-class leading care here, surrounded by their friends, by their family, and that sense of normality. So now, as I talk to patients, as I do, about their cancer and about their choices, I now know that no matter what their circumstances, I get to talk to them about their treatment options and they get that choice. They can choose to have the right treatment that's for them. Uh, and I think I'm in a hugely, hugely privileged position because I'm the one person who gets to see them all the way through that journey. So I get to see the actual positive impact it makes to them, to their families. And I get to see that relief and that appreciation firsthand when I explain to them that yes, you can have the care you need, yes, it will be here, and no, it won't cost you anything. And that's a very, very privileged position for me to be in. So we treat patients, uh, people across a full range of cancers, um, those that you expect to the very, very rare situations. I've had circumstances where I've been talking to colleagues over in in Boston about very unusual situations and those sub-site super specialists over in Brigham and Women's have had to search the depth of their knowledge and look at the research to work out what the right thing is to do. But with that team effort of the people here knowing the patients, the specialists over there in Brigham putting it together, every single patient here has had personalised world-leading radiation care. Again, the one thing that brings it all back together is every single patient that we've had through has very clearly demonstrated how grateful and appreciative they are of the whole team effort that goes behind making sure that we can do this and do it well. So now that we're a year on, we're reflecting on the positive difference that we've made, it's also the time to look forward at the many challenges ahead. So bringing radiation therapy here has made a huge difference, but it's also taken a remarkable amount of effort and dedication. Our model of care has actually been recognised and impressed a number of people around the world. I've been asked about how we've done this and how people can potentially copy it or do something similar from people in the US, Canada, the UK, Belgium, New Zealand, Australia, uh, Cambodia, Papua New Guinea, uh, Pacific Islands and the Caribbean. So in a very, very small period of time, people are saying, okay, this is interesting, we can see what they're doing, what can we do to kind of copy it? 
And actually, if you look at the global effort to fight cancer, the cancer burden is getting more complex, it's getting more challenging. But if you break it down to the basics that you need, it comes down to prevention, to early detection, to access to care, and to collaboration to sustain that benefit. And we're now in a position where we have those. We have them through here, we have them through hospital, we have them through the collaboration. But we must use this momentum to sustain that effort, to build infrastructures and systems that will make sure that this level of care continues across the board for all cancer patients. There's a risk, I think, that people may tire of hearing about us and hearing about the need for fundraising. However, the only people who would never tire of hearing that are those affected by cancer, either with cancer or with loved ones. So again, on their behalf, I'd like to say thank you for all the effort to get to this point. My name is Dr. Mark Davis, and it is really a tremendous honor for me to represent Dana-Farber Brigham Women's Cancer Center here in Bermuda. Uh, what an incredible opportunity this is for us uh, to reflect upon the tremendous achievements we've made together. And I just want to give a special thanks to my colleagues and friends here in Bermuda for allowing us to be here, to be engaged in something that's so fundamentally important. And as Dr. Foster said, uh, for us to help in the fight against cancer here in Bermuda. I'd also like to, um, to focus on some things that Dr. Foster mentioned. We, we at uh, Brigham Health have as a part of our mission collaboration around the world to improve health around the world. We are a charitable organization as the folks are here, and part of our central identity revolves around this type of collaboration. So I must say that as we do work around the world, I point to this collaboration, how it came about, the model for implementation, as the shining example of what can happen. You have an energized, engaged community, you have fantastic local practitioners, you have a board that's engaged, you have governmental leaders, you have a hospital that's engaged, and together with outside groups um, such as ours, we've been able to provide truly cutting edge care to people. People that would never have gotten it before, uh, people who might have gotten it would, but would have to spend a month or two away from their family and friends. And what a tremendous opportunity it is for us to be able to help provide the right care at the right time in the right place. I can tell you that um, any of us at Dana-Farber Brigham, uh, should the need arise, would feel absolutely comfortable um, having our family or friends treated here. This is the cutting edge level of care that we would all expect and hope uh, for anybody in need. It, it is remarkable as you look back at the timing of this that this was just an idea in 2014. And in 2015, we signed a Memorandum of Understanding. Um, 2016, there was groundbreaking. A year later, there's a facility, and here we sit with 130 patients having received truly outstanding care. Uh, I'd also like to echo the notion that this is the beginning. This is an extraordinary foundation. Uh, healthcare is changing in ways that I think none of us really predicted. Um, those of us that have been in health for, I uh, hate to say how many years now, but in, in the last couple of years, this whole idea that artificial intelligence, the idea that cancer care is not, as Dr. Kazona will discuss, lung cancer care is not just taking care of lung cancer, it is taking care of your lung cancer. What does your cancer specifically mean? What, what is the clinical situation? What's the nature of your tumor? What are the genetics or the genetics of you that you have with this, this new revolution in um, computer power and modeling? How does that impact the care we're gonna give in radiation therapy? So we're at an exciting time in medicine. Uh, I'm very uh, pleased and proud to see that Bermuda is in the forefront. Um, I'm very proud to go around the world. We just opened uh, a, a collaboration in, with cancer in China, and I'm happy to tell you, I point to this as the way that it should and could be done using teletechnologies and partnership to deliver outstanding care. So we look forward to many years of collaboration. And again, we thank you for your warm welcome here in Bermuda in this outstandingly beautiful day. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. David Kozano, a radiation oncologist at the Dana-Farber Brigham and Women's Cancer Center. I really feel I can't overstate how wonderful the work being done here is. 
I've had the opportunity to uh, spend a week in Bermuda in August and again uh, this February, uh, filling in for Dr. Foster and sitting in his chair. And from that perspective, I can speak to just how fine the work here is. Uh, before the center opened, I treated a number of Bermudians who uh, come up to Boston for treatment of their lung cancers, and it's clear, looking in their eyes and talking with them, how painful it is to be separated from people's families, friends, and other loved ones for the six to seven weeks it takes to treat typical lung cancer. So being able to care for people right here uh, in the neighborhood and in the company of the people they know uh, cannot be overstated. I'd also like to say, in speaking to our collaboration uh, that we have between uh, the folks here in Bermuda and in our hospitals in Boston, um, how wonderful it's been to have that collaboration. Um, for example, uh, every Monday at noon Eastern, uh, we would discuss our cases together, starting with Dr. Foskers, who would uh, review his cases with us, and then we will review our cases with them. And although, for the most part, um, uh, his management, we feel, is perfect and everything passes without comment. It is still an opportunity for us to ask questions, you know, probe into the decision making that goes into every single case. You know, not a case is left out of this review uh, on a weekly basis. Um, and so, you know, I think this underlies, you know, how important it is for us to be able to discuss each other's work. And reflecting about that, um, my first year as a radiation oncologist. I remember uh, when I had my very first panel of multidisciplinary patients to see that not a single patient on that panel uh, resembled anything uh, like the patients that I had encountered during residency. You can't learn it all from a textbook. But it's very important to be able to discuss cases with your colleagues as each patient's you know, case is different. And that's something that I feel Dr. Foster feels very free to do in speaking with the over two dozen specialists that we have across our department representing all the cancers that we have um, in, from common to rare. To that end, I, I feel that you know, we, we treat uh, Dr. Foster like he's uh, just one straight over. Uh, <laughs> and it's been just such a wonderful thing. Well, thank you.